Hello, and thanks for watching the next video of uh, Palo Alto Video Training Series. In this video, we're going to talk about uh, monitoring, blogging, reporting, and uh, basically how they work. Um, first of all, we just log into our using the password game. There is a uh, tab called Monitor, so I'm just going to um, explain a bit about this tab and, and uh, how we can basically use this tab and how we can look for things in this tab. So basically, as you can see, there, there are some um, traffic logging and, and uh, threat logging and things like that that you can see on this tab. Um, it's pretty um, self-explained, uh, and uh, you can see that uh, um, the time, type, uh, zones, in and out zone, uh, source address, destination address, what protocol, whether it's a load or block, and things like that, so you can see in here. So you have a number of options that you can view here. We also have uh, the ability to customize this column so you can add a stuff to it or remove stuff to it as well. You can say destination camp country if you want to have it in there as well. So if you can recognize the country it will basically put it in there if, if this, it, it is a public IP address obviously. Um, and um, yeah there are a number of things that you can add to the columns. The way that it works is uh, if you want to filter based on a uh, specific uh, address or, or uh, detail in there. For example, we want to specifically look for 192.203.230.1 uh, as destination. We just click on this and you can see it add just a filter on the top and we click on the apply filter button and you can see that it has filtered all the destinations uh, or 192.203.230.10. Um, if we want to change that to the source, you could just change it manually and just click on apply again. So it will change it the other way at the moment. There is, there is no traffic. So clearing the filter. If you want to apply this source filter, you could just click on it. And as you can see again, address that source. Click on apply. And you can see that it will filter all the uh, uh, source addresses 192.168.1.2. Or if you want to, again, just clear the filter. If you want to look for <coughs> specific user, say this is a user, just, just click on it and you can see added the filter. Just uh, apply the filter and you can see the logs are there. So you can export the logs to CSV file as well if you want to and use it somewhere else. That's an option. If you don't, uh, if you want to use a filter, um, combination of filters, there are AND and OR options in there. So if you want to uh, use um, anything on outside with the source address, blah, and destination. So you can see it will add AND uh, expression just in the middle so so you will do that or you could change that to or as well if you want to so I will give you all those kind of uh, granular detail there is there is a magnifying uh, icon in there if you click on that it will give you the detail about uh, that particular log you see that uh, session ID, what is the action, what is the role and uh, source address and all those kind of specific details that you might need. Um, basically, um, if you want to uh, find out uh, why this policy is uh, why this uh, specific role is, is happening and, and 
is actually hitting which policy you could see the role dns you could go to the policies and have a look at the dns role and find that uh, uh, which role it is so i can just show you in a second so you see that we have a dns role so looking there that log is actually an outcome of this role so that role has been hidden uh, well <laughs> The um, other tab that we have, well, before we go there, we have, uh, we are able to add filters in there as well, if we want to, uh, and we could uh, basically choose our filters like that, rather than, so one option was to click on, on, on the filter that you want, the other option is just click on the uh, add filter and try to basically uh, specify things that you want. So I'll just add that um, or this and so on. So you can just specify different type of filtering and uh, basically add your filters in there. Same thing, uh, threats, we have our threat logging. So if there is a virus or there is a threat or there is a vulnerability or things like that, so you will see it. You will see it here. Uh, obviously, we haven't had really any issue in our environment, so you don't see anything here. Uh, URL filtering, if you have any specific URL filtering, uh, you could uh, basically uh, have a look here. You can see that there are some categories which has been identified in here, which was uh, blocked uh, when we were testing. Um, wildfire, if, if you're using wildfire and so on. So you could uh, basically look at the alarms and the system logs. System logs are also important ones. Well, um, the reason for that is, is it will give you a lot of details about the system itself, um, about how, how it's working and how it's operational. In case if there is any problem, you could basically uh, look for that problem if, for example, the authentication method doesn't work, the lab server is unavailable, or um, there is a problem with failover and all those kind of things, you can see it here. Configuration tab is also an important one because it gives you some sort of auditing about who is doing what. So you can see that the last time I have committed a change or changed something, uh, what have I done, and all those kind of things, and, uh, what the user is doing what. Uh, when it will be recorded here, which is quite good. Um, there are some uh, nice maps and stuff in here when, when you are in a production. If you have a, um, basically, um, if you, your firewall is on in production, uh, these threat maps and stuff will show you all the attacks and threats around the world and, and where they're coming from and where they're going and all those kind of things, which is quite useful as well. Um, botnet, and if, if you have uh, any botnet configuration, you can see it in there, so basically it will determine and show you the IP addresses that they are in the botnet database and things like that. So there are, there are some, um, Obviously, uh, report capabilities with Palo Alto as well. You can see that uh, you could create custom reports if you want to, and you could just email it to uh, different uh, email addresses if you want to. But there are some uh, default reports like uh, User activity reports. So if you if you just try to create a report, just call it this user report. Uh, user uh, username is going to be Pan, and, and uh, we just say for the last thirty days and run now. It's going to generate a report for that specific user and find out uh, basically uh, what that specific user has done. So we haven't really had any activity for that specific user during the time, so it's not going to give us anything. 
but uh, um, let's try it for probably user another user and try to generate the report again. And you can see there are some Okay, no, I thought there is really uh, There hasn't been any activity for this particular user so that's uh, well. That's the uh, that's the idea, right? So so if you have you are in a production, we are in a test environment. We don't really have that much uh, activity report and things like that. But you could uh, just create. We just go ahead and create and manage custom reports, and we just uh, call it test report and uh, do it for like thirty days um, and. Uh, we just uh, try different filters, so we basically want to see a report on these filters that we have created. Um, and if you want to basically create a filter here, so these are the columns that will be available on, on uh, the report this is the filter so we pretty much have no application so we better to um, maybe test a traffic uh, report and we just add some filters to be shown on, on, on the report and uh, run the report so you can see that one, once we run the report, it will give us details about uh, obviously the columns that we specify for the to CSV or PDF, whatever you want. You can see that we have the report created for us just there, about what IP address is and what has been the traffic and things like that. So you have a uh, capability of doing all those kind of things yourself. If you want to, I can create an email scheduler as well. So you can just uh, set up an email address and uh, basically uh, send those reports to the email address that you create. Going back to the custom reports, again, you have a lot of um, um, flexibility in terms of the database you can see that you can create application statistics url traffic threat and all those kind of different reports so when you're in a production environment this and you have a lot of traffic these reports are, are quite useful uh, we're working in a test so we don't really have too much traffic to generate too much reports but uh, i just showed you a very quick one uh, which uh, is available um, let's just add a couple of other possibly um, fields. IP protocol, IP packets, and maybe role, what role, source address, source port, source user if available. Destination address and destination port. So let's just run the report again quickly, export it to PDF, and you can see it will give us a lot of details about uh, what's been going on in the network, who's been doing what. So you can create reports based on the traffic, based on security, based on uh, its. Uh, different scenarios, so you could do all those kind of things. Um, I guess we have uh, pretty much covered the reports. 
um, and, and uh, how the login system works. There, there is an important thing that you need to know if we um, obviously want to have a central uh, logging um, system, if we have a syslog server or something like that, then obviously we have to go and uh, within the device that we have to set up a syslog server, um, call it whatever, uh, just call it the test syslog server. Um, and the uh, IP address, we don't really have a syslog server here, but I just want to show you the concept. Um, once, once we have created the syslog uh, profile, we can go to the log setting and specify the logs to be sent to the syslog server, test syslog server that just created. So I can say information. Uh, low, medium, high, critical, critical logs to be sent to that syslog server, for example. And uh, uh, same as config logs and things like that, you can go to the syslog server. So once you specify that, um, obviously um, you will send all the logs to the syslog server and you will have uh, capability. So that syslog server could be something like a Splunk or, or uh, secure words or whatever your syslog server can be uh, and you could obviously use the syslog profile that you created on the rules as well you could just uh, say that uh, on on the rule um, uh, sorry on on the rule we want to basically uh, send the logs to a specific syslog server and uh, basically create a login profile and say uh, information or critical logs for this specific test log profile for this specific uh, uh, policy or, or rules. We want to send the logs to syslog server, we want to send information log, critical log, or whatever log you want to the syslog server and click on OK and then obviously all of the logs for that particular role will be sent to the syslog server and you can analyze the logs over there. The lo uh, logs on, on monitor section are obviously limited to the disk space that you have on the fireboard, they will be rotated so it's always a good idea to go and create a new syslog server and transfer all of your logs to a syslog server. I hope you enjoyed this video uh, and thanks for watching. I'll, I'll be with you on the next one.